Soren Imperia's Bloodlord might just be the piece that Vampires has always wanted to become modern viable finally. And not only that, over the past year of Magic sets coming out, Vampires has gotten a lot of love, and it's been pretty amazing. Soren does take up to sack a vampire, so we are going to be playing an Aristocrats variant of Vampires today that's based around sacking creatures. So it's going to be very slow and very grindy, but very resilient. So we're going to see how it holds up in today's meta. So let's jump right into the deck tech, followed by the gameplay. Hope you enjoy. This video is sponsored by mtgonlinestore.com. For some cool and creative MTG apparel and accessories, everything from t-shirts to backpacks, check out mtgonlinestore.com and use promo code MARIN for 15% off your next order. And it also supports the show. Link is down below. If you wanted to pick up today's deck while also supporting the channel, you can get your cards from tcgplayer.com by clicking the decklist link down below. This video is supported by our generous patrons. If you wanted to join the Marination as well, you can find our Patreon link down below in the description, and you'll also gain access to our Patreon-exclusive Discord server, where we discuss future Fan Fridays episodes as well as many other things. For those who have not seen my recent Q&A video we did on the channel, yes indeed, Aristocrats is my second favorite archetype. I love it, it's a lot of fun every time we played it. And every single time we played it, we went four and one, so it does quite well. Ever since we started the channel, over a year and a half ago, played it four times, four one every time. So now, thanks to some recent pieces we got from our recent sets, we can now make a vampire-themed Aristocrats deck, and we're going to see how this one does compared to the non-restricted Aristocrats deck. Will it do the same? Will it do better? Let's find out. Kicking it right off with our death triggers, we got Cruel Celebrant, Blood Artist, and the brand new Cordial Vampire. So the Aristocrats archetype is generally based off of sacrificing your creatures so that you can get those death triggers off of Blood Artist and Zulaport Cutthroat. But the problem is Zulaport Cutthroat was a human, but now thanks to War of the Spark, we have Cruel Celebrant, which is basically the same thing, but it's a vampire, which opens the doors to vampire tribal aristocrats. And then Cordial Vampire is another new death trigger we're getting, so when any creature dies, we get a 1-1 one -one counter on each vampire vampire we control. It's going to buff the team, make them huge, so even things like Cruel Celebrant and Blood Artist can attack. And then we're going to need some sack outlets, of course, so Indulge Aristocrat is a 1 mana 1-1 one, one lifelink. And pay 2, sack a creature, to put a 1-1 one, one counter on each vampire we control. This in conjunction with Cordial Vampire is going to make all of our vampires really huge. And then Soren and Imperious Bloodlord can take up to put a counter on a vampire, and then it also gains Death Touch and Lifelink until end of turn, but also has another plus 1, where we can sack a vampire to Lightning Helix something. That's going to be good for killing creatures, get more death triggers with those uh, cordial uh, vampires, but also it's a sacrifice outlet. We start sacrificing the dudes that you're going to see momentarily, which is going to help us get all those death triggers. And then he can minus three to put a vampire card from our hand onto the battlefield, just in case we're trying to be hyper efficient. That doesn't really uh, work with our little mini dorks, but that's cool for another variant of vampires that runs big five drops like Champion of Dusk and whatnot. Um, onto our sackables, things we want to be sacking. Blood gas, we can freely sack this thing, play a land, return it to the battlefield, sack it again, and just keep returning it with like fetch lands and whatnot. So a lot of sack triggers there. Carrier Thrall and Martyr a Dusk sack to put out a 1 1 token. Uh, so they're sackable. But most importantly, Martyr of Dusk puts out a 1 1 life linking vampire token. And that's relevant because that thing's going to grow a lot uh, with the Indulgent Aristocrat and Cordial Vampire, which is pretty nice. And then we have a couple more sack based things in Dusk Legion Zealot and Unearth. Dusk Legion Zealot is not technically a sackable, but it is kind of sackable. It enters, draws you a card, and you lose a life. So it replaces itself, but then it's just a 1 1 body. But don't underestimate a 1 1 body in this deck um, because with Cordial Vampire and Indulgent Aristocrat, our dudes can get pretty massive. Uh, but then again, he is just a sackable after you already use his ETB ability. And then Unearth is actually kind of nice with our uh, sackable dudes like Moderate Dusk and Carrier Thrall, because then that gives us the ability to sack them again, sack their token again, and make our dudes huge. So I really like the addition of Unearth in here as well. So we're getting a lot of new pieces from like Modern Horizons, War of the Spark, Core Set 2020. So yeah, it's been really nice lately. We got a total of 20 lands, nothing too special going on here aside from a place that a Cavern of Souls. And then onto the side, we've got three copies of Stony Silence to shut down those artifact strategies. Got the control package of three copies of Liliana uh, to be able to make the control players and combo players ditch their hands, which is going to be nice. And we got a place at a ley line of the void. We don't want to have things like rest in peace because we care about our death triggers. So that exiles the opponent's grave if they're like on dredge or hogak or whatnot. Then we got three copies of Path to Exile, just as some removal, as well as two copies of Anguish and Making, which is removal, but also an answer 
um, to just non-creature permanents that are problematic, like planeswalkers and stuff like that. So that's about it. I'll get the stream started and I'll see you in the first round. Got a game here against Cat and Played. And yes, we're going to be on the play with some black white vampire aristocrats. And that looks like a very nice keep. Um, got a nice curve out here and got the unearth to be able to buy back cordial if it dies or if we sacrifice something to indulge in aristocrat we'll be able to get it back so start on concealed courtyard into indulgent aristocrates oh i just realized that's our one aristocrat in the deck indulgent aristocrat there we go is this that flavor text Please come in. Hors d'oeuvres are on the table. What's the hors d'oeuvres? Oh, we got people on the table. Ooh. See, he's getting bigger with those counters, see? The blood is their source of their power. Haven't you ever played Skyrim? Okay, opponents on a... Okay, we can definitely chump block our way to victory against this deck. So, let's go with... I like the cordial. Get Cordial out there. Start growing our dudes. So every time a dude dies, every time we sack a dude to Indulgent, we're gonna get two 1-1 one -one counters in each of our guys. It's pretty nice. And Desolation Zealot, we can throw it out there to Chum Block because it is a sackable. Let's see if they have a dude to get back the... Vengevine. They gotta cast three spells per turn. Second creature spell. So they're gonna be able to do that for sure. They got a million different one drops. They can even get that, but Gravecrawler. Yep. Carrion Feeder. Alright, that's even better. Alright, we'll take it. Alright, let's see if we can get a Sorin or something. Maybe we should have chump blocked. Hogak. All right, that's a problem because it tramples, so we can't chump block that on our way to victory. There is a Sorin, although I don't think we have the time to cast that right now. All right, so what do we do? I want a Cruel Celebrant out there, but I just, I can't find the opportunity to play it. I gotta play it, though. Yeah, I, I need my Drain Triggers. I gotta get there. Not gonna fetch this Marsh Flats because I don't want to take the damage. So I will chump with Cordial. And then I'll just unearth it back next turn. See, this is what we were talking about uh, during the stream earlier, is that the Hogak deck is still busted, doesn't need the bridge from below to still do this. Is that turn two Hogak and Vengevine? Still get 20 power on turn two. And what's what's uh, not busted about that? Ooh, they're they're throwing everything at us. Alright, so let's uh block blood gas there. Let's block Stitcher's Plier there. And let's block let's chump block the uh Vengevine there. I could block the... Could block this. Force them to sack their guys. Yeah. No, let's just, let's just save the most damage. We're in a stabilizing situation here. And we're gonna get a lot of triggers off uh, Cruel Celebrant, hopefully. Oh, it's only you control. It's not Blood Artist. Ooh, we'll be able to trade with the with the Vengevine now. That's great.
And we have this lifelinking indulgent aristocrat, so maybe this is good. And now I can activate indulgent aristocrat and unearth. So this is actually pretty good. We actually have lethal here. We actually have lethal. Actually, we're one short. Yeah, we're, we're definitely, we're one short. Never mind, we got a drain trigger. That's lethal, look at that. They're both six power. They are both six power. I think they screwed up. I think they, our dudes are bigger. <laughs> look at that. This deck just goes out of control. It goes so big. When you have indulgent plus cordial, your dudes are just so thick. Man, their their death triggers help us out. But now we get in Ley Light of the Void and Path to Exile. And uh, what do we want to go on the counter plan or the drain plan? I'm not too sure. I guess Unearth is filler. Cut two carrier thralls. I think that's what we've been doing. And one Soren. Double ley line, but I'm gonna keep it because I like the rest of our hand. So let's keep that. So even if they kill one, I'll have a second one. So I'm just hoping for no Maelstrom Pulse. And we got the means to grind here. We got the, the death triggers, we got the, the cantrip, we got the sackable, sack of lunch. Carry on feeder, carry on my wayward feeder. And we got the one drop. Nice. You gotta play fair weenie magic now. It's magic at its finest. Alright, we don't have a second black source, unfortunately, but we can cantrip with this Dusk Legion Zealot. Zealot to try to find some black mana. There's some black mana. All right, let's get in with Mr. Indulgent Aristocrat for one. They cannot block. Fetching down to 15. Nature's Claim. All right, there's Nature's Claim number one. Gaining four life is not bad. We were getting a little bit low. Do they have Assassin's Trophy, though? Alright, play Cordial. Now, please give me a land. Now I have Indulgent plus Cordial again, so now I can start sacking things. I can play Marty and then sack it, so that's, that's the dream here. That's what we're hoping for. We got a Lightning Axe here. Okay, they do have Assassin's Trophy. They do got Assassin's Trophy. But that gives us the mana we wanted. And now we can actually sack a dude in a turn for a uh, Indulgent Aristocrat here. So that's nice. And they're late to the party. They had their graveyard gone for a while. So I'm feeling pretty Gucci about this one. Discard Bloodgast and Gravecrawler. Play a land, get back Bloodgast. They can get back Gravecrawler. Which is fine. You get back Gravecrawler. But they only got one card left in hand. And now we can sacrifice Dusk Legion Zealot. Put two 1-1 one -one counters on each of our guys. None of their guys can block. So now we go Marty. Sacrifice Marty. Get two counters on each of our dudes. And we got a 5-5 five, five life linker, and they have nothing that can block at all. All her dudes say, cannot block, cannot block, cannot block. And that's what the Hogak deck is like. It's, it's a deck that cannot really block. And then this also has life, li it's, it's also a life linker, and it's getting bigger. <laughs> See, Marty is so good. <laughs> Marty is great in here. Hey, what's up, Jay?
and they scoop it up. They cannot deal with the vampire horde. The double ley lines getting through. I'm surprised they got through it. Props to them, but they that they ramped us and gave us four additional life in the process and also wasted the first three turns of their game. So and that's nice. Got a game here against Missos Keel Fool. And yes, we're gonna be on the play with some vampire aristocrats, and that is a good keep. Let's keep that and start on Swamp into Indulgent Aristocrat Go. Now we have Cordial plus Indulgent, and that's what we want to see. Yeah, Catalepsy. I was gonna name off Catalepsy. I saw I scrolled past the Catalepsy song on my phone, and I was gonna name that one off, but I didn't. Plus, I love Placenta of Power Viz. I, I should have named that one. Maggot Colony is a great one. I want a Maggot Colony shirt so bad. But, like, they're hard to come by. Alright, get him for one. You saw Placenta Power Viz too, Lucky. Maggot Colony has one of the coolest artworks for album covers in the slam metal genre. And dude, man, I want that I want that album art on a shirt and I want it now. Like Magic the Gathering art, dude, is amazing. They flashback of lingering souls. Yup. Alright, let's get a Sackable out there. I'm not gonna play Soren yet. Alright, let's just pass. I don't I don't feel the need to attack yet. I'm hoping that my indulgent aristocrat does not die before I untap, because I like to play a cordial then sack the dusk legion and just go crazy. Get, get four counters on or three counters on all my guys. The open for Volvadania last year is Bound of Fear, Azazel, Wormhole. Yeah, dude, that's what Slam does. They use samples of, like, Family Guy. They use samples of, like, South Park. Aw, oh, we get an Inquisition. Don't take my Cordial. I want my Cordial. You can take my Soren. Okay, they take my Soren. Good. Now, don't bolt my Aristocrat, please. I need my Aristocrat. Just flash back another Souls. Just flash back another Souls. Just do it. You remember waking the cadaver? <laughs> Using a sample of Mort in the shower? Yeah, that's what Slam does. They use little samples of, like, Family Guy and stuff. Oh, I, I saw this perfect one by, uh, they use an American Dad sample. Great. Korn, one of your all-time favorites? I like one song by Korn, and that's Twist. Um, I don't really listen to any other Korn, though. Unearth. Alright, so play a second Cordial. The opening of Blind puts shills up your spine. Oh, that's why your name is Blind Guardian. Because you love Blind so much. I never heard of it. I don't listen to a lot of corn, so I'll, I'll check that out. That sounds interesting. But usually the opening of Twist gives people chills up their spine. The, the opening of Twist by corn is pretty gnarly. I don't listen. I don't listen to Hate Breed. It's that's some old stuff. Um. Because you also really like power metal. I hate power metal. I hate power metal. Things like Dragon Force. I mean, obviously, everybody's taking a little bit of a liking to Dragon Force naturally from hearing through the fire and flames a trillion times. But, you know, through the fire and flames, I mean, I, I've played so many through the, through the fire and flames songs, not like played to listen to, but like played on, on games. That it's just become, my ears have become used to it. And that's how it is for everybody our age. They just heard so many different through the Fire and Flame songs like Guitar Hero, Cologne Hero. They just get used to it. Um, but I never even took the chance of listening to other power metal. But uh, you can call, you can seriously call Viking metal a different kind of, of power metal. And I've listened to a lot of Ammon and Amarth in my days. I've listened to a lot of Ammon and Amarth. 
And there was another Viking metal band that I listened to that I, I don't remember. Killswitch Engage, yeah, that's I listened to Killswitch Engage a lot when I was like twelve or thirteen. Um, but not any, not so much anymore. Yeah, but now we went up to make light the torch, dude. All right, let's uh, unearth our dusk legion zealots. Boom. Play our Cruel Celebrant. And go attacking. So we just three for two to our opponent. Sure. Nine Inch Nails. Oh man, that's a blast from the past. I haven't heard of Nine Inch Nails in, in like 10 years too. I, I forgot I forgot they existed, dude. It's been a long time, man. A long time since I heard of Nine Inch Nails. I don't remember any of their songs. Even back when I knew about them, I didn't listen to them. I probably heard like one of their songs. Look how big our dudes are! They're ten tens. That's a ten ten life link. As those are ten tens. I'm telling you, indulge in aristocrat plus cordial vampire is the real deal. It's insane. It's some good, some goodies. Oh, they're unearthing as well. Two can play that game. They say. All right, well, I have enough mana to just drain them out here. So this is fine. They have a path to exile to get blown out, though. And they can see they're not going to beat the horde. They can't deal with it. On to sideboarding. Leyline is actually pretty good against them. Um, because they're running off Bedlam Revelers and, like, Lootings and, and Lingering Souls and stuff like that. So I kind of like Leyline. And I think that's it. Like, Path is mm -hmm. good for hitting the, the, whatchamacallit, the, uh, the Young Pyros. And that can give them Chump Blockers forever, which I don't want them to have. So I guess we're bringing that in. I like my Unearths, though. I like my Unearths because I... I just, I want to, I want to be able to get my stuff back because they're going to be killing and inquisitioning my stuff. All right, maybe I don't need paths. Let's just go three ley lines. Cut a carrier thrall. Cut a cordial, or cut a cruel. Cut another carrier thrall. All right, I'll try it. System of a down. F-U-G-Z Boggs. Bog. Boggs is just naming all the soft bands. We were talking about slam and stuff, and then, and then Boggs just starts talking about metalcore and and rock. But dude, everybody, everybody is like those bands at some point. Throw in Leyline. Yes, uh, yes, everybody has went through their System of a Down phase. I did used to listen to a lot of System of a Down back in the day, but haven't ever since. Did opponent not have a turn one play? Weren't they in the play? All right, let's throw out. Let's throw out Marty. Marty is here. Marty is now. Let's date Meyer. All right, let's go to combat attack. You know, I should have just put a counter on that guy. Sure. Okay, looks like it didn't matter. 
Alright, let's get Soren out there. So I don't get thought seized. And we're just gonna put a counter on this vamp. Trying to figure out what slam metal is? Dude, we told you a ton of bands to go check out. Do, you, do I have to like hook up my guitar and like play some slam for you? All right, they two for one themselves to kill a martyr. They they had to two for one themselves to kill Marty. Cause that's what Marty takes. Red boar sore and all right, they're going all out. Cordial vampire, it's a goodie. I should have won the other order, but it's all good. All right, Marty and Cordy are here. Socketed Foundry. Now they can hard cast Lingering Souls. This ley line's giving them problems. Now they have to play Fair Magic. Yep, so they loot again. Man, this cordial's gonna do work here. Some serious work. It's gonna be great. Of no shame in attacking. Urborg. I'm not gonna play that. I'll actually help him. Play Marty number two, or Marty number three, and carry. Marty and carry are here. And now we can go attacking. Haste the day? I've never heard of them in a long time either, dude. Boggs is here with all the blasts from the past. Bands that I haven't heard about since I was like a teenager. A young teenager. Boggs is here with the nostalgia trips, man. Dude, Blind Guardian, Deicide can top Motorhead. Trust me, Deicide's a great live band. Attack with everything except Cordial. Go ahead, opponent, block him. Block him. I don't care. Actually, now that's a problem because I attacked with everything. But the Martyrs give me a token first. That's gonna give me a lot of counters. That's a lot of counters. So I really hope that this stacks correctly. If it doesn't stack correctly, I'm gonna be sad. Dude, block it. Block it with your season pyro. You got the baby and the daddy. You got the baby daddy, okay? Blocks like that. Okay, sure, I, I want the Martys to die. Sorry, Martys, you gotta go. It's for your own good. You must sprout babies out of your bottoms. So, sp sprout them babies. Give me them babies. Thank you. Put these on the stack, foist. And then these. There we go. Always yield that. I'm gonna kill this guy in response, Lightning Helix, sure. Uh, sure. Sure. Give me these. Make them thick, please. Thank you. Dogless Shrine tapped and pass. So now I got six six life linkers. Pantera, no, nah, I'm not. I'm not a Pantera fan at all. I I'm not a fan of dad metal. So that includes Pantera, Iron Maiden, Judas Priest, Metallica. Um. Steel Panther, I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about, but dad metal like that is something that I'm not into. 
I like a lot of different kinds of metal genres, but dad metal and beat down are two things I don't like. And power metal. I'm not a fan of power metal either. Power metal is way too legendary for me. It's super legendary. It's over the top legendary. Owen is doing a pretty good job for not having a graveyard. Because they're just hitting all their removal. Look at all the stuff they removed from us. They're almost at the point of hard casting um, a Bedlam Reveler, but do they have enough lands total to do that? They probably have one Dogless Shrine or zero Dogless Shrines, maybe two or one Sacred Foundry, two Blood Crypts, two Mountains and two Swamps. Yeah, they should have enough. And then they also have a place at a Black Cleave Cliffs. Dude, stop giving me lands. Oh wait, why did I attack with that Scion? I didn't see their 2-2 their over there. Alright, so that tells me they got a bolt. They got a bolt here. But now we're left with the 6-6. Six, six, and they are in top deck mode. Yep, they're in top deck mode though. Alright opponent, let's see what you can do in top deck mode. Inquisition? Sure. I would have played something if I had it. Inquisition. Exiles, they're in top deck mode. They can start attacking, though. Ooh, Cruel Celebrant. Go attacking. Chumps. All right. Do you mean deathcore when you say slam metal? No, I mean slam metal. Slam metal and deathcore are very different things. Oh, they got smithing helix. Good thing they can't flash that back. Dude, Boggs, I I just named off several several slam metal bands a second ago, and and you didn't check it out. Scroll up in the chat, dude. Um, Blind Guardian named off some as well. Listen to some Disgorge. That, like I said, I just named it off. That was a good one to check out. Yeah, it's it's one of the more it's it's in the extreme metal category. Not not really the death metal category. It's in the extreme metal. So extreme metal is like the genres of like slam, grind, um, anything that's just like over the top brutal. Just like way too brutal than it should be. That's usually a, a category, a subset of extreme metal. So slam and slamming brutal, slamming brutal gore grind is what I call it. It's uh, it's kind of um, you know, extreme metal. Opponent, stop resisting. Just take lethal already. Now this blood gas is our key to grinding out. We can get it back every turn. And we save this land in hand and this fetch for this blood gas. Kaya's Guile. Sack a creature, exile all cards. Sure. At least they're not exiling this blood gas.
Slipknot is death metal? No. No, they're not at all. Slipknot is just regular metal. Yeah, Slipknot is just regular metal. They got some soft stuff too, like very- they got some soft things that are not even- not even in the metal genre. But they're- they're just regular metal. Oh nice, we got a Sorin. So let's um... Let's go to the combat step, let's go attacking. And then we can finally kill that young Pyro so they can stop resisting, they can stop- they can stop chump blocking, man. Nile. Now there we go. Now you name off a death metal band. Yep, Nile is indeed um, death metal. They're they're classic death metal, but they're death metal. Nile's great. All right, so let's tick up, sack the blood ghast. Helix, young pyro. Player Borg, always yes, always yield. Yeah, Nile's great. We can all agree. I jammed so much Nile back in the day. When I was a youngster. Opponent taps out and concedes. Alright, they can't handle all the recursion and a constant lightning helix every single turn. They're not going to deal with that. They only have one Dreadbore in their deck and they used it earlier. So that Soren's there for good and they ain't going to deal with that. So they're hoping to top deck Kaya's Guile plus I don't even know. So Soren, proven to be amazing. That's awesome. Free lightning helix for days. Got a game here against Dusty Clouds, and yes, we're going to be on the play with some Vampire Aristocrats. And that seems like a decent hand. We don't have a sack outlet, but hopefully Dusk Legion draws us into one. And we're on the play, right? I don't remember. I literally just said it and I forgot. So no W Brooks, no hand disruption because we are not, we are not like a Goyf midrange deck or anything like that. We're not like a Lingering Souls deck or... Anything like that. We're a, we're strictly aristocrats, and aristocrats doesn't use hand disruption really. Um, maybe in the sideboard in the past I put hand disruption before like duress or something. Right, let's just go swamp go. Pretty much everything we have is a two drop except um, indulgent aristocrat. In terms of creatures, breeding pool. So this is going to be. Oh, I know what this is. I literally just saw this the other day. What is it? I can't remember. I can't remember. Hold on, I'm trying to remember what this is. Oh, no, 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 no. What, Wern's Wild Cantor is the Fasundity combo, but I don't think they're Fasundity. Uh, so this could be... It's a combo deck for sure. So we're probably gonna be a little bit slow to grind out here. Alright, so let's go Vampire. And go Dusk Legion Zealot. Draw. Okay. So we're going on beatdowns for now. Neobrand, yeah, that's what I was thinking, but Neobrand, do they even run Wild Cantor and Neobrand? I don't think they do. That's why I was a little bit confused. What's up, Dracovo? Welcome back to the stream. Soren, Craigasm. Yeah, Soren's definitely Craigasm. Hog lips. And three mana with the Simeon Spear Guide. What is this? Mama, Mama Morphos. Okay, it's two mana. So it is it is Neo brand. Why Wild Cantor? Okay, did they do they have the Neo form? It looks like they looted pretty heavily there. I don't think this is a matchup we can really win. Yeah, they got the Neo form. That literally the zero cards left in hand, they literally had it all right there. They can only draw twice, but do they find the uh, shoal plus the thing? Let's see if they found the shoal plus the thing. Did they find it? Survey says... Survey says...
Another summoner's pet. Okay, now they found it. Now they're they're fetching our talk worm. Yeah. Now they got the shoal. And here we go. So this is what this deck does. And this is what I said is going to be the next menace to modern. This is, in my personal opinion, the next menace to modern. Because it is literally a turn one combo deck. And it's like very consistent. Like you got four Alice Rider Alice Horse Riders, four Shoals. You got four Neoforms, four Eldritch Evolutions. So you got two of each of those. So automatically that's pretty consistent. And then the Summoner's Packs also helps your Shoals. And then, you know, Gristlebrand drawing 14 cards finds your Shoals. Um, Manamorphose basically makes your deck 56 cards. Along with London Mulligan in the mix, you are just good to go. And, um... Yeah, it's, it's pretty consistent. And I think I think that the next thing... I don't, I'm not saying they should ban London Mulligan, but... Just like maybe maybe Allosaurus Rider, because that would kill this deck. Or maybe uh, maybe Nourishing Shoal could be a thing to uh, ban, because we already have one banned Shoal. We got Blazing Shoal banned, so why not ban a second Shoal? They're already far down the rabbit hole as it is. So, because Shoal also helps the the typical Gorios Gristlebrand decks too. So. Maybe Shoal would just be good to kill both of those. And, yep, there we go. On to side broading. Um, we're gonna bring in... I don't think we really have anything for this. I mean, Path to Exile, maybe. Liliana, I could see, um, doing something. Blood Arse is probably... Blood Arse is probably just way too slow here. Probably just beating down TBH. I mean, they're not really killing our stuff, so on Earth... But, no. Nah, we can probably go crazy with the Drain Triggers. Let's cut one Soren, and let's cut. We're trying to get those those drain triggers like crazy here. Okay, you know what? Maybe we're going on the cordial vampire beatdown plan. So yeah, bring back in the Soren. Cut the cut the aristocrat vampires, and try it like that. We're just going to try to go for the cordial plan, because they're not going to be interactive. What's up, Rector Bree? Is there such a thing as Bolas's Citadel plus zero drops? Um, well, in Vintage there is. In Vintage. And I think uh, that's thing in Vintage. I mean, it was a thing. It was a brew. Uh, this hand does not... We're not going to win by beating in for two. So we have to get some kind of disruptions. I'm going to mull. Soren's... I mean, I'm not going to go down even more. Let's throw away uh, one redundant martyr. And this is going to be very difficult. I don't think this is going to be really possible. This is not a matchup where uh, we're prepared for. We're not really prepared for combo, I admit. For today's deck, we're not really prepared for combo. Um, we're more hoping to verse uh, mid-range and control and opposing creature decks because... We can grind out pretty heavily against those. Alright, let's go vamp. And let's... Cantrip here, try to find like a Liliana. There's not a Liliana, but that's the land we needed for Liliana. So now I'm hoping to draw a Liliana off the top. You're calling it Bolas's Cereal? Or Bola you should call it Bolas's Cheerios. Because that's what that's the actual magic term for it. What's up, Esfo Su fan? Do they have Wow. They had the Neo form. This deck's broken, man. It's totally broken. It needs to get nerfed. Yo, what up guys? Post-production Marin here, the typical per video speed up session. Usually we speed up the longest game in the video, and this was the longest game, as well as we're speeding up the next one as well. Now this has been happening lately on the channel where we have to speed up two games in the video, but we've just been playing grindy decks, and we do this to make sure that the video is not way longer than it should be. It's still well over an hour, even with two sped up rounds. And so as I always say, if you wanted to catch the full games unedited, unsped up, and uncut from the video, you can go to the Twitch link down below in the description and watch the entire VOD there. So we end up going up against goblins the old vile goblins with ringleader and matron 
And now it's time for the grind fest. Now this was a very, very, very long match. It was about an hour long, I would say. Or they got passionately killing our uh, vampires, rather. And then Soren killing their goblins. We're lightning helixing every turn, killing something every turn. But they have so much card advantage in their deck that they're able to keep up. Because they got, between Matron and Ringleader, they're able to just generate such an amount of goblins. It is just like an endless, it's just like an endless swarm of goblins to deal with. Like if we didn't have Soren helixing something every turn, by the way, we're at 34 life and counting. Uh, it, it would be pretty difficult. So now we're at the point of where we're getting to, we're running out of stuff to do. And thankfully we still got Soren helixing stuff, but they, they're getting those munitions experts to two for one us. We got the vampire aristocrat there. So here's where they have to go all at Soren to kill it because they know that it's about to helix them again. And they're going to go to one, so they can't have that. And they have War Chief giving their dudes haste. So they decide to attack all out at Soren here, or they leave back one dude because they need a chump block, but that's fine. Uh, so we let Soren go down, and we still have a board state. We top deck another unearth, and here's why I contemplate what to unearth. And so I think I end up getting back a sackable, because a sackable will allow me to start pumping up counters with the indulgent aristocrat here. So I get a... What did I get? A carrier thrall. Yeah, see, I got carry, and carry is going to be a sackable so that we can get counters on both of our guys so that they can't really... They decided not block here, and that screws them over. I think they wanted to block, but they just clicked through or something like that. But they took it, and they had to sack board their board state to that siege gang, sling gang, whatever it's called, and uh, drain some life and go back to one. So in the next couple turns, they keep stabilizing at one. They keep attacking for some reason, and here we go attacking again. They have to stabilize at one. I top deck blood gas, and it has so that kind of catches them off guard, off, off, guard, off guard, forcing them to sack a majority of their board again. So they're back down to one, and now they're in a very rough spot. We got Cordial Vampire that's going to start growing our guys, and there's not much they can do. So they can see we go into the next game, and I think I bring in the Path to Exiles, and that's it. I contemplate bringing in more stuff, but Path to Exiles is all I need because I just got to deal with the essential goblins like Kiki Jiki and Pashalik Mons. After that, I don't really care. So we get a pretty nice looking keep here. We got Marty and Carrie in this opening hand. We got Dubs Marty's, and... Um, Soren's going to start getting those uh, lightning helixes going on every single turn. And uh, I think this was the game where I was like talking to chat, wasn't even paying attention. And I attacked with my um, aristocrat when I wasn't supposed to. But this next turn here, we get out an indulgent aristocrat and it's able to start just activating its ability over and over again. They're able to get endless card advantage between ringleaders and matrons, but uh, Soren's helixing something every turn. So that's pretty nice. So now we go with the the whatchamacallit, the indulgent aristocrat, and that thing starts ticking up, sacking dudes, getting counters on all their guys, and we know because they fetched a, a goblin chain whirler with their um, goblin matron, uh, we have to grow our guys here. Uh, we couldn't take a turn off to play more guys, we had to start growing them, putting counters on them so that we don't get swept by chain whirler. And here's where I just go attacking with everything for some reason, and they're able to kill my indulgent aristocrat, but that's fine because we still got a pretty nice board state and we're still helixing something every single turn, which is pretty nice. And then they're able to get that draining guy back out and stabilize a little bit. But I do have a path for it. They didn't want to sack their entire board. And here's why I get unearthed to get back another sackable. And now there's pretty much nothing they can do. So we ended up getting there against goblins. Uh, we were going to probably get this one anyways, but they were timing out. Uh, they, did, they did get Pashalik Mons, so maybe there was a chance they could have ground out. But they were taking so long, they just ended up timing out. So taking down goblins with vampires. Jumping right into the next speed up here, one right after the other. Uh, so we got a pretty nice keep here. They end up inquisitioning us. They don't take Soren, so that tells me that they probably have either a counter spell or an answer for it. Uh, starting on the silent, uh, double silent clearing into an island, I didn't know what they were on. So they go uh, Ranger Captain Vios to grab Hex Parasite, and that Hex Parasite is the reason why they let us keep our Soren. Although their Hex Parasite dies. And we still got our Soren, so their plan didn't go through fruition. And they get Double Dash Shadow out, and it's fine because we got Soren to keep helixing their face, and they get themselves pretty low, and Soren just finishes them off. So a helix to the face every turn when we have infinite chump blockers to chump those shadows means that we're just inevitably going to get there. So that is pretty nice. 
we go on to the next game and we get a pretty, pretty nice keep as well. We hit our land drops to get that Sorin out as well. And uh, we end up holding off on the Sorin until we can get a little bit of a board state. And especially they got Spell Queller, so playing Sorin is a little bit dangerous. So they eat our Dusk Legion Zealot and they eat our Sorin with dubs Spell Quellers. And now that is a little bit annoying, but that's fine. We didn't need those anyways. We still got plenty of stuff in hand to grind out. As long as we can keep our um, Blood Artist, we should be able to grind out. They're able to path one Blood Artist or... No, they path the Indulgent Risk Crap because it's our sack outlet and start chump blocking. Now here is where the grind fest begins. They start getting shadow after shadow, as you will see here. And it has become our job to start um, chump blocking to survive. We have a Blood Artist. We just got to somehow hang on and get them to zero so we have double on earth i decide to get the aristocrat to just start uh getting counters on our guys and whatnot it doesn't matter because of a hex parasite but now i got cordial vampire and now there's a, a chance that we can become a threat um on the offensive so i end up triple blocking here to get a bunch of counters and drain triggers get them down to three and now top deck indulgent aristocrat and here's where i'm able to just attack uh sack the one they blocked to indulge in crap put counters on the blood artists and that is going to drain them as well as finish them off with combat damage so gg to esper shadow got a game here against glorious incident we haven't played against this guy in like a year and so the rerun i'm gonna keep this hand with some soren vampire aristocrats um we don't have a third land but we got three turns to draw one before it matters but i've still got a bunch of two drops to play so that's pretty nice and i th i still don't know what i'm supposed to start on the sackables or the, the triggers i haven't played aristocrats in months so i don't remember if i'm supposed to start on the sackable that attacks for more or the death trigger because i i would want my death triggers to survive so maybe i should just throw away the sackables first to see if they get removed or bait removal all right, they're deciding whether or not they want to keep their opening hand. All right, they are keeping... Oh, they're going down to five. Ooh, it's Tron. All right, so they might still win. They might still win. On Earth. All right. So we are playing a grindy deck, so we're not meant to grind out against Tron. Tron is a deck that I didn't- Oh wow, they're just gonna get natural, natural Tron Karn. That's what these decks do. Alright, so we're gonna go with the aggro play here. So Carrier Thrall, please give me a land for Soren. If I'm gonna have any chance of racing, it's gonna be Lightning Helixing every turn. Watch them just have natural Tron into Karn. Mold of five. Because that's what Tron does. I wouldn't be surprised. Yep, of course. See, with London Mulligan, Tron just don't care. Oh, they didn't have it. And I have Marty. And I didn't get a land. I drew three cards, didn't find a land, unfortunately. But now I have Marty. Beating down with some bears. Don't just go quad land, Ugin. Don't tell me you got land, 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 land Ugin here. That'd be obnoxious as a gear hulk. Sanctum of Ugin, the absolute perfect nut draw. And a worm coil, yeah. At least I can chump and sack to that, so. So let's go vampire. And let's throw out indulgent aristocrat and pass. I mean, I could have went attacking, but it's all right. I'm hoping they attack. Yee. All right. Jump block there. Sacrifice to indulge an aristocrat. Create a vampire first, and then... And then get a counter on all the vampires. Sweetums. And then we can unearth and do it again. Chromatic star. Maybe we can get a lethal here. With Soren helixing? Can we get enough? No, we're, we're far off. Six, seven, eight, nine. That's ten damage. Yeah, it's not enough. 
If I can get two Sorens, then maybe I can actually, like, deal with all the worm coils because I don't have any problem sacking dudes. Chromatic Star. All right, they pass. We got to land, so let's think about this. I can go attacking, and then I can sack the, the carrier thrall. I'll get a token that I can sack from mana. Then I can go unearth plus two one drops, or, or unearth plus a two drop plus leave up a sack. And that's not bad. Yeah, I think we're going to do that. So let's go attacking. Get in. And then let's go marsh flats. Let's... Oh, wait, I don't have the mana to do that, huh? All right, I guess we're just going to go carry your thrall and leave up the sack. Yeah, I could have gotten for more damage there, but it's all good. Oh, I could have done that, though, because I would get a Scion that can sack itself to prevent lifelink. Just don't find your bombs, opponent. You, you got the nut draw already, mulling to five, and just don't find a bomb. Attacks anyways, please, go through with it. Yee. All right. Block there. Fetch. Shock because I don't care. Sack that. Get a counter on all my dudes. And now we have lethal. So, opponent, what do you got? Oh, they did have you in. Of course. Do I have any way of beating this? I don't think so. Yeah, I'm not about to beat Ugin plus Worm Coil. Man, Tron doing Tron things. That's a shame. Lily is not terrible. I don't care about creatures. I can I don't need path. Anguish and making for sure. Stony maybe might do something. Maybe. I'm I'm contemplating Lily, because Lily can make him like if if we can make him ditch their hand before they get Tron online, they'll run out of bombs to like cast. But they have a lot of cantrip like rocks in there, so I don't know. Unearth can just come out, because they're not gonna be killing our stuff a lot. Even though I can't unearth my own things after I sack them. A cruel celebrant. Uh, yeah, I think our drain triggers are too slow here. Yeah, I think blood artist is just too slow here. Cut blood artist, bring in lilies. All right. Yo, what's up, Blind Guardian Seven Five Six? You recently became a fan via YouTube. Glad to catch a stream as it's late here in England. What's up, man? Welcome to the stream. Good to have you here. Thank you for seeking further Marin content. And we don't have land. That is a mull, and that is a keep. Although it doesn't really interact with Tron, doesn't really interact with Tron. But I kind of don't want to go to five. Um, if I go to five, what am I really hoping for? Probably English and making Stony Silence Lily. You know what? I should probably mole. I'm not gonna be Tron with a bunch of little weenies. I have to get some disruption, so I'm gonna mole. Okay. I'll keep that. I will keep that, and I'll throw away my, uh, rule celebrants, because I think the drain triggers are too slow. I'd rather have the aggro dudes. Come on, glorious incident. Of course you got a Ugin avatar. You and your you and your Ugins. Let's keep that. Throw away the cruel celebrantes. And yes. 
Uh, cavern on Vamp. Thank goodness we have Erberg. So now we have the black for Lily if we do get another land. Power plant into, of course, something. Thank goodness it's not a map. All right, throw out Carrier Thrall. It attacks for one more. All right, now that's Lily. Hopefully we'll be able to make our opponent ditch everything. Cracks the star for green. Do they have the land into Sylvan Scrying? Man, stop! Don't Sylvan Ah, oh, why do opponents always gotta have turn three Tron? Just don't have a Karn and don't have an O Stone. All right, play your Berg. Lily. Take up Lily. Ditch Cavern. Opponent, please don't have Karn. They already lamed us out. They lamed us out twice already. So just, just do me a favor, don't have Karn. Thragtusk. Okay, they discard Thragtusk. And Tron, of course. And what's it gonna be? Nothing! They had nothing. All right, so Douglas Shrine tapped. Ordeal Vampire. Uncounterable, doesn't matter. I can make myself sack a creature just to get a counter on all my dudes, but I don't think it's worth it. I want them to ditch their hand. Opponent, ditch your hand. And don't hit a land. How do they have nothing with seven colorless mana and Tron? Can't believe it. They just have all their ten drops. Or if I if I have any hope, it's uh, getting Lily to ult so they can sack a Tron land. Because I have no fulminated mages. Uh, of course, of course that happens. All right, that's it. Just got lamed out by Ugin, and I told you that's that's why I've said for years that I think Ugin should be banned because literally it's just land, 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 Ugin, and you cannot, nobody beats Ugin. I know every single one of you have a story like, oh, Marion, you're overreacting. I've beat Ugin before, but. Let's be real here. Nobody's going to beat Ugin, realistically. Nobody, like, Ugin resolves, you're done. You lost. Like, exile your entire board, and then it's just going to start exiling it over and over again and bolting you every turn. It's just, it's, it's not, it's not a balanced card. And opponent just doesn't, like, mulligans don't matter. Tron, with Leaded Mulligan especially, it's just going to get Tron on turn three every time. And that's why it's always a top tier deck. Especially right now. It's uh, it's kind of uh, a little bit slow against all the graveyard decks right now, but against anything else, it really holds its ground. So we ended up with five total wins, and this deck, I admit, did not prepare for combo. Usually, with my sideboards, when I build decks for videos, I always make sure we can interact with combo decks in some sort of way. But today, I, I, I just sucked it up and accepted it. We are not beating combo with this deck. And lo and behold, um, whatchamacallit, that uh, Allosaurus Rider deck walked all over us because we couldn't do anything to them. So things like that, we're just not going to interact. We are meant to play the grind game. And when we got the grindy matchups, this deck proved to pull through. It can chump block forever. And in conjunction with Unearth, getting two fresh chump blocks back from the grave, getting back Marty or Carrie, um, or Dusky or... Or Cordy, you know, all this stuff, bl bloody, two bloodies. And uh, all these things are just great to unearth, just because they're so essential to our strategy, just getting them back and then 
being able to sack stuff with Soren all over again. Indulgent plus Cordial was amazing. This this little little synergy right here was like the best thing in the deck. It was so great. And um, now another way you can play vampires is you can exploit Soren's ability and run like that champion of dusk to like draw, spit it out there and draw a bunch of cards. You can run vampire nocturnus vampires you can run like legions lieutenant vampires like marty with like stromkirk captain and just like all the lords and run vampires in the way you would run merfolk and that's a thing but in that way you're a lot more vulnerable to spot removal because you're not a deck that's meant to have sackables and get all your things back from the graveyard and there's so many heavily interactive decks in the meta right now to where they're just going to deal with everything and you can't get it back. But a deck like this can grind. This comes back. Unearth gets stuff back. These do things when they die. Our stuff gets bigger when they die. And man, I, I, I like this Aristocrats variant a lot. I mean, that's just me being biased because Aristocrats is my second favorite archetype. Um, but yeah, I encourage you to try this deck out. It was a lot of fun. Now, if the question is, do I prefer vampire aristocrats over regular aristocrats? The answer would probably be no. I think I still prefer regular aristocrats better because you're not so you're not so limited as to what you can do. You can the sky's a limit with regular aristocrats. You can run anything. And I, I like running it with like Lingering Souls, Bitter Blossom, and Hidden Stockpile and Aristocrats. And um yeah, I, but I, this version is still pretty decent. If you're a fan of like the Cordial Vampire and Vampire Travel in general, this is some good stuff right here. Cordial plus Indulgent plus Soren. Helixing every turn is just a fun thing to do, man. So let me know what you think about this deck in the comments down below. Let me know what you change about it. Would you try it out? And uh, it's actually pretty cheap. If you actually cut out, um, if you cut out Cavernous Souls and like fetches and make the mana base cheap, it's actually a really cheap deck. Like all the entire main board except blood gas is like dirt cheap and um sideboard obviously you can change some things but and pretty affordable deck so hit that like button if you enjoyed the video and subscribe if you're new for the jankiest the gameplay every other day um thank you very much to all the patrons the sponsors the chats of course it was a fun day talking about metal and whatnot with blind here and I gotta go check out Blind by Corn now because he says it's cool. And we're gonna get it out of here. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace out.